Hey, welcome folks, Bob here from bobsplumbingvideos.com and in this video, we're gonna talk about that pop-up waste and drain assembly in your bathroom sink. Perhaps it's time to put a new one in, maybe you're putting in a new faucet and you're gonna change out the old pop-up assembly. We're gonna talk about the nuances and differences between plastic and a good quality metal pop-up. So stick around, I'll be right back. Hey, welcome folks, Bob here from bobsplumbingvideos.com. If you're new to this channel, please consider subscribing. On this channel, I post easy to follow how-to videos on basic home plumbing repairs. If you're interested in any of the materials or tools I use that you see in this video, I will leave links in the description box below. We already know what this video is about, folks, so let's jump down to the bench. And one more thing, troll alert. Get lost. All right, folks, so here we are. We have a few pop-up waste and drain assemblies. Now, these I w went out and bought. Actually, the one in the middle is the one I buy. I stock these. I stock these regularly. I buy them from a, a supplier that sells only to professional plumbers. This is a heavy brass assembly, which we will talk about in a bit. I'm going to put this down for a minute. I just want to talk about these two. These two are plastic. Now, I purchased both of these. One of these came from one home center. One came from another home center. This one came in a box with a faucet, a plastic faucet, if you can believe it or not. This one is also plastic, but it's it's chrome. So basically, if, if, a, if a homeowner buys one of these, I explain to them what the pitfalls could be, and more often than not, I end up putting in one of my own pop-ups. But let's go over this real quickly. I don't want to make this a long, drawn-out video. I hate these things. I just hate these plastic things, and, and, and we'll get to see why when we get to put this on the sink later. But pretty much, they're plastic. I mean, what else is there to say? As much as plastic uh, has a very long lifespan, uh, it's nothing that can be uh, really whacked up or tightened up very much. Um, and, and the quality of the materials inside this thing really, really isn't up to my standards, if you will. Um, as we can see here, let me, let me just take this stopper out if I can. I can pull this out of here. But basically, so in here, in the back here, you have a series of washers. Now, there's a washer in there, a beveled washer. And there also is a beveled washer inside of this nut here. I don't know if you can see that. I don't know why my camera is having trouble focusing, but there it is. But if you take these out, if I poke these out, Kind of look at the uh, the quality of these little puppies. I mean, they're very, very. They're not very meaty. They're not very substantial. Uh, and that's just you know that's just the way they are. I mean, th these things are most of these things are manufactured in uh, in China, and uh, they don't give you much bang for the buck. So these have to be put in there because. Otherwise, if they're not in there, when you tighten down on the uh, on the rod that goes into the T, it will leak. So we have this other washer here, and this goes in here, and this would then go in here, and then this would get tightened up. And again, these are plastic, and you can't really whack these up very much. You can see the rod in there, the way the rod works. Uh, just a little uh, a little uh, reminder here. So when you pull the rod that's on top of the faucet up, thereby pulling this arm up, the popper goes down. It'll go all the way down. When you push it down, this goes up, lets the water out. Uh, what I don't like about these things, besides that they're not made with any amount of quality, or two things. If you're going straight down into a trap and you have a distance beyond the length of this integrated tailpiece, you're gonna to have to use an additional extension tailpiece. Not a big deal, but you need to be aware that you're gonna to have to extend it if you're going straight into the trap as such. Now, in a lot of instances, 
you're not going straight down into the trap. You may be offset or, or you may be using a couple of elbows, but not a deal breaker, but you're going to have to extend the uh, integrated tailpiece. Now, on this other one here, I want to show you the same thing. This one is really chintzy, really cheap. Same thing. They have the uh, these cheap be beveled washers in here that really aren't substantial, but you know, as they say, you get what you pay for. Let me get this popper out of here. So you're going to see that washer in there. And it's, there's one inside this nut as well. So that when you put this in here, when you tighten up on these things, that will then stiffen up the rod and same, same concept. When the rod is down, stopper goes up when the stopper goes down the rod is in the in the up position but the one thing I hate about these is that they do not supply any friction washers below these rubber washers so the idea is you put this in from the bottom and we'll, we'll go over that I'm going to show you this on the sink you push this up from below the sink you will therefore catch this as it goes through the sink and then you're going to make this washer up. You're going to start turning and turning and turning and turning. What I don't like is the fact that they do not have a friction washer underneath this rubber washer. And, and, and the, the function of a friction washer basically is to allow this nut to turn while pushing the washer up. And what's going to happen is when that washer gets up against the sink, whether it's cast iron, whether it's granite, whether it's... Uh, man-made marble it's going to start to stutter if you will it's going to start to kind of scrape against the bottom of the rubber washer and that's a no-no that could impede your ability to tighten it correctly what i like to have is a friction washer and i'll show you on the metal one once i bring it up so the fact that these don't have these washers on them really irks me so what i do when I, have to, when I have to put one of these things in, is I will make my own friction washer. And you can make your friction washer basically out of any material you want, but what I generally do quickly is I go out, I'll take the washer, and I'll use the washer as a template, and I'll get maybe the box that the faucet came in, or I'll get the back of a uh, eight and a half by 11 pad, and I will make my own version of a friction washer. So that will go right down on there. And it doesn't have to be perfect. As you can see, I cut the corners. I didn't make it perfectly round. Then you can put your washer back on here. And you bring that all the way down. And you're going to put it up through the sink. And then you will proceed to tighten up this bottom nut. And as you tighten up the bottom nut, this will ride up against the, uh, the cardboard rather than right up against the, uh, the rubber washer itself. And that's going to allow it to tighten properly. So that's my little thing about these plastic poppers. Well, there's, there's additional stuff, but we're going to go over that when we get over to the sink. Now, if you look at my heavy-duty metal pop-up waste assembly, you can see that it's pretty substantial and pretty beefy. Excuse me, that's okay. This is live video. I'm going to take this out. I need to take the stopper out. And the stopper came out by itself. That's okay. I'm not worried about that, but what I wanted to show you was look at the washers. And you could, you could, there's no question that you can see the difference between this and, for instance, this. I mean, there's, there's, there's no comparison as to which one has more substance to it. That's 
what I that's one thing I like about these heavy duty brass pop ups. But what I also like about them is they have a, a removable tailpiece, so you can take this tailpiece out. And I, I carry in my truck double ended tailpieces, twelve inches long. So if I'm going straight into a trap and this little tailpiece that's supplied with this pop up is short, I just get my twelve inch threaded tailpiece I go straight into the trap now again if I have to offset it I use a couple of 90s not a problem not a big deal but that's that's another thing I like about these it comes with a removable tailpiece but what I really like about these is and this one is a tough one this one this one is so this washer is so tightly on here but the point to this is I wanted to show you this and you know what rather than take it off and go crazy Look at this look at this friction washer they put on here. This is a heavy duty metal friction washer. So as I start to tighten this up against the bottom of the sink, that friction washer just pushes up against that washer and I can grab that with a pair of channel locks and I can go to town. I can tighten and tighten and tighten. If it's a cast iron sink, I'm going to whack this puppy up, and it's going to be a beautiful thing, as they say. So you get what you pay for, folks. Uh, these heavy-duty brass pop-ups are, in my opinion, worth every penny. I mean, everything from the rods to the nuts, the way they, the way they fit on here, are just superior in every way, shape, and form. And if people uh, want to pay for them, I will gladly install these on their sink rather than install rather than install the plastic one that they bought from the home center so without further ado let's get a sink over here and i'll show you my process for actually uh, removing one and then installing one rather effortlessly all right before i actually put this into the sink i just want to run through the process here you have the t that is going to come up through the bottom. Now you may be doing this in place. You're sitting down. You're you're sending this up through the bottom of the sink. On the top of the sink, you have the flange that goes on the inside of the sink. You're going to put plumber's putty around that flange. You can't miss this step. Bottom line, period. Nothing else to say. Now, the part that goes up through the sink, I myself do not put Teflon on these threads, but I see people do. And if you're more comfortable with doing that, that's fine. Put it on there. Uh, for me, I don't. Now, the holes that you see here, these holes are actually to take the overflow from a sink if the sink is equipped with an overflow. The sink you're looking at here does not have an overflow in it. There are no holes in here that are going to drain the water out of the sink if the sink should happen to overfill. This is a cheap sink from Home Depot. So... You don't want to get anything in these holes. Now, I encourage anybody doing this to put on top of that beveled washer that goes up from the bottom, put yourself some plumber's putty around it. Just put a bead of plumber's putty around it. You will not be sorry because some of these sinks are irregular. They're not perfectly flat. There's waves in them. And if you don't put the plumber's putty in there, they won't fill in these little gaps that you can't see. So the procedure basically is going to be the T gets set up. Oh, first, let me back up. Run this nut all the way down as far as you can get it. Get it down as far as you can get it. You want to allow these threads to go up as far as they can through the sink so then you're able to screw this on. So we're going to put this in the bottom of the sink here, and the T is going to face towards where the faucet faces, where the faucet holes are. And let me move the camera closer, and uh, and we'll and we'll proceed with that. Okay, we are going to put the T with the T part facing toward the faucet holes. We're going to send this down. Don't forget, we're going to push this down. And once we get it down in there, we are going to want to catch the the flange that's on the inside of the sink and thread it in. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to reverse this sink and I'm going to show you what we're looking at from the other side. All right, you see this thread sticking through this Teflon on here. Again, I don't use Teflon. Here's the flange that goes through the sink. 
don't forget, you're going to put a bead of putty on here. Now, if you want, you can, you can put a little schmear of uh, Megalock pipe joint compound on here. If you want, you don't have to. But then what we're going to do is we're going to screw this onto the threads. And once we get that fully down to where we're confident it's down, we are going to pull back on it, and then we are going to proceed to tighten the nut on the opposite end. And let me just turn this around so you can see this better. And we're going to drop down to the other side now, and I'll show you what that looks like. And now we're going to proceed to tighten up this nut. And hopefully you've got the friction washer on there so that when this nut uh, starts turning up, it's not binding up against the, the, the rubber washer there. And what we'll do is we'll take our channel locks and we will proceed to tighten this up once it gets relatively tight. Now this is the same thing. I'm not going to demonstrate this with the heavy-duty brass pop-up. It's the same procedure. But you want to get that T facing back kind of lining up with the middle hole in the faucet. And then what you'll eventually do is you'll come in here with a pair of channel locks. And you're gonna hold on to this tailpiece with one hand right here. And you will proceed to tighten this until you feel that it's tight enough. Now, bear in mind folks, cast iron sinks, you can get a little more aggressive on these cheap uh, home center store style sinks uh, you might have to be a little bit more delicate and if you're working with a china sink you absolutely have to be a little bit more delicate so once you get that up there and you're fairly confident that it's that it's that it's tight then you could stop and what i like to do is i get my finger here and i'll kind of squeeze any of this excess putty that actually squeezes out from where the washer is sitting up against the sink and I'm fairly confident that I got a watertight seal. What we'll do is let me flip the sink over. And show you inside here. And there's the flange. And I will go and just take off this putty here. And you can get a little, um, you can get a little, uh, little screwdriver or a little a toothpick actually works well to get this excess putty out of here and clean this up. That's not a problem. And you can clean that up with the rag just well. And what may happen for a week or two after this is done, you'll see this putty squeeze out. And you can just come here with a toothpick and just wipe it off and clean it up. So now what we'll do is we'll set this sink on top of the vanity, and I'll show you how to adjust the pop-up, which is really an easy task to do. And let's do that right now. All right, so we are back. And what we're going to do now is send the stopper down from inside the sink with that hole facing back. And we are going to thread this rod down through the hole and catch that stopper. And we will tighten that up. A, to make it watertight and, and make sure it's it's stiff enough to make everything working here. And then what I'll do is I'll go get the linkage and send it through the hole. And what I like to do is I leave my rod all the way down. I know that when the rod is down, the stopper in the sink is all the way up. And then I will proceed to take the rod and linkage and get that all situated. So I'm going to send the rod through the sink, or through the faucet, excuse me, and you can just about see that there. And let me just move this camera a minute. 
we get a better idea. And then we have a little thumb latch on this uh, linkage. Let me back that off so the rod could slip past it. And what I like to do is I like to clip this piece of linkage on the rod first. There's a little spring clip here. You have to squeeze this. So you would put one end on the rod. You decide which hole you want to, you know, I don't know how high up you want to go, how low you want to go. It's all going to depend on the configuration of the sink, the faucet, a lot of determining factors. But I'm going to put it here in the uh, fourth hole from the bottom. I'm going to squeeze this clip. And now that's on there and it can't come off. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to slide it back. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to line up the rod here. Send it through. And again, my rod here is all the way down, which tells me my popper is all the way up. And this rod, what I generally do, it's hitting the faucet now. I just, I back it off ever so slightly, maybe an eighth of an inch, leave a little space so you can get your fingers under it. Once I have it where I want it, I'll tighten down this wing nut. And I'll just give it a little, a little snug up with the pliers. And then I will, I will try it out. And as you can see, it's, it's functioning. But one thing I, one tip I wanted to give you that when you pull the rod up on the sink, let me, let me turn this sink around and, and, and show you what I'm talking. About. Actually, I don't think I need to turn it around. You can probably see this, but this rod is kind of like crooked. And even though you, you face this T, you try to get it bullseye with the middle hole of the faucet. Sometimes when you pull that rod up, it kind of, it goes off kilter, if you will. So what I do is I go upside top, up the top, while I'm looking at the faucet and I'm looking at the rod, and if the rod is sitting crooked, if it's veering off to the left or it's veering off to the right, whichever the case may be, while I'm looking at that, I'll open up the bottom of the vanity, I'll stick my hand under there, and I will turn the T. Now, what's going to happen is you look at that rod, and that rod will straighten out, and sometimes the T will be off kilter. The T will be facing either left or either right, but the rod will be straight, and that's what I'm interested in. I'm interested in that rod being dead on because that's what the customer sees. It makes no difference what's happening under the sink. They're not interested. They're interested in only what they can see. So that's a tip for you. If you see that that rod is twisted or kilted from the top, and when you pull it up, it's veering off to the right or veering off to the left, I suggest you get down under there. You adjust the T until the pull rod is absolutely straight. And just as a little insurance, after you do that, you go back in there with your channel locks, and you just give it one final little whack up with the channel lock pliers, and you should be good to go. And that's that's pretty much the basics of installing a, a pop-up. Now, I'm not going to do this with a brass pop-up. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to flip the sink over and show you what to do if you have to remove an old one, because more often than not, if they're plastic, these will come right out. You can cut these out. But if you have a brass one in there that's stuck, I'll show you what to do with this little mini hacksaw so you can pop the nut and get it out of the sink. All right, and finally, if you have an old pop-up in your sink and you cannot get this nut to turn, and it's perhaps a china sink, or even if it's a cast iron sink and you're afraid that you can't back this nut off, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to split this nut. You're going to have to split this nut, and let me back the camera up here a second. If you have a little mini hacksaw such as this, this is a mini hacksaw from Lennox. It's got 32 teeth per inch on it. And what I do is I make a cut and I will cut through this nut. I will cut all the way through the nut until I cut all the way down and it gets to the friction washer. Once I have an opening in there, I will put a screwdriver in there and pop that nut. If I have to make two cuts, I will. I'll make one on this side. I'll make one on the opposite side. I will pop the nut, split it in two pieces. 
Alternatively, if I'm in a real hurry, I will actually get a hacksaw. I will slice this T right off. I'll go whatever way you, you left to right, right to left, slice the T off. Then you take your saw and go straight down, go straight across the threads, penetrate the lock washer on both ends. Keep going until you hit the friction washer down on the bottom. And then you can put a screwdriver on either end, pop the nut, and then you can get a hammer and just pop the remainder of the pop-up out of there. And that's how you get them off. Don't try to force these. If you're working on a china sink, you're going to screw it up. Trust me. How do you think I learned? And that's it, folks. So I, I, I hope uh, you got a little something out of this video. And, and if you want to go change your pop-up, you should not be afraid to do it. It's not that difficult at all. So there you go, folks, pop-up waste and drain assemblies. They're really not that difficult to do. But I will encourage you, if you can find the brass ones, please put the brass ones in. Go out of your way to find them. They're out there. They're available. I can tell you from experience. The plastic ones just don't stand up to the test of time. I mean, people, kids, they use that pull-up rod like it was a stick shift on a car. And after a while, those plastic ones just, they just fall apart plain and simple. And you know what? My business is based on not getting called back. You know, one call back is the kiss of death. Two callbacks, forget about it. I lost my shirt. And after the second callback, I often encourage them to put a brass pop-up on there. So again, folks, I hope you enjoyed the video. It's really not that difficult to do. I encourage you to leave your comments, both good and bad, down below. Please check out these two videos that are going to show up to my left and right. And as I always like to say, happy plumbing.